Hi, I'm Kelly Vaughn, and this is Inside Indian. And on this show, we're about helping those in our community. And we have someone in the studio who can help us do that. And she is Jane Slayton, and you are the executive director of the Merciful Help Center. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You are located uh, in... On the north, north of Indianapolis, right? Yes, north okay. of Indianapolis, just on 146th Street, right in between Carmel and Westfield. Okay, so tell folks what the Merciful Help Center is. The Merciful Help Center is a wraparound service. Mm -hmm. We're on the property of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in a building called the Matthew 25 building. Okay. And in it is the Merciful Help Center, which is one entity in the Trinity Free Clinic on the other side. Okay. And so the Merciful Help Center is a wraparound service for families that need all sorts of help, not just food, but maybe housing, um, furniture for their house, housewares, everything from, you know, all the way down to your underwear. We take care of it all. Wow, okay. So who are the needy? Um, and, you know, and I think it's probably evolved over the years. I can remember even mm -hmm. 10 years ago with the economic, you know, tsunami, I call it. Mm -hmm. um, it, was an, it was incredible. People who, you know, had degrees and who were doing mm -hmm. lavishly well, all of a sudden were, you know, showing up at your door and other doors to mm -hmm. say, I need help. But today, you know, we've mm -hmm. kind of had a, an economic upturn. Mm -hmm. Who are they? Yeah. So you're right. The Great Recession was crazy for us in 2008. And mm. we ran lots and lots of job search, you know, kind of things like that, that were maybe not as needed and are not as needed now. But you still have people suffering from the Great um, to, from that recession mm -hmm. and you still have people that lost their whole 401k and all sorts of things that their retirement has changed now and they're more on the fixed income where they would have had a draw from a 401k uh. and so that has a lasting impression and a lasting dif difficulties mm -hmm. so we still see some of that we still hear some of that from the folks but we have a lot of people that are new immigrants to the country, mm -hmm. um, people that are on religious asylum, political asylum, or um, people that are, you know, maybe not even documented, um, mm -hmm. undocumented and have a really, really hard time getting help just about anywhere. Mm. Pretty much churches and small organizations are where they have to go because mm -hmm. you can't get help through the government agency if you don't have a social security number and right. things like that. For, through something, through WIC you right. can, but right. it gets so technical. But um, So a lot of that, a lot of domestic violence situations. Really? So people, they have to leave their home and they start over. Um, they, they, you know, it might not even be domestic violence. It could just be ending in divorce. That's mm -hmm. why it's so good that we offer so many services because if a person comes in and they're kicked out of their home, they don't have a place to live, we can find them an affordable apartment. We can help them with the financial aid of, you know, maybe some of that mm -hmm. um, cost. We can help them to furnish the apartment to make sure their kids have a bed to sleep on when they're there. Mm -hmm. um, then they go to the housewares department and get sheets for the bed, a pillow to sleep on, dishes, you know, and then... You go on and in, we can give them socks and underwear. We give them cl clothing vouchers from Goodwill mm -hmm. or clothing, depending on the sizes, coats, mm -hmm. you know, boots, shoes, tools for schools, school supplies for uh, wow. back to school or, you know, fire victims need it like right away. Mm -hmm. um, so we keep that on hand all the time. Um, and then food to stock your refrigerator and get you started again. So right. we can really help a person get started or get restarted. Um, that's not a problem. Okay. You know, when families break down, families break down for all sorts of reasons. But you mm -hmm. can have two families because homeless, homelessness has so many different degrees, so many levels. Mm -hmm. So you can be homeless but living in somebody else's home. And those relationships break down pretty fast. Wow. And so they can be, we can okay. help them restart. Okay. And that's interesting to, to define homelessness. So, mm -hmm. again, is it somebody uh, where it's a family breakdown? maybe even a brother or sister, or you've got a husband and wife divorce mm -hmm. uh, situation, or even a roommate, or that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Wow, mm -hmm. and those are things that people don't think about. And we typically think of somebody who's in a shelter, but mm -hmm. sometimes you can end up being on the street just unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. Yes, think. oh yes, uh, oh yes. All mm -hmm. the, I mean, mm -hmm. you can have um, a person that's having a failure to, to, to springboard off their parents' help um, say you, they graduate college and they just have a really mental relapse. It could even be in de a depression. There could be a, men a mental breakdown or a breakdown in the mm -hmm. family. And when there is, where does that 20-year-old go? 
how do they get started? You know, do they go to the shelter or are, if they're able to work and they can earn mm -hmm. a paycheck and they can make enough to pay their bills, it's better to help them get started right. and to go that direction because it's harder to break out of the homelessness pattern. So right. better to help them get started in, a, in a, you know, living in a normal life, okay. um, being responsible for their bills, teaching them budgeting. We do that too. Oh and boy, you we, teach budgeting. I we did... teach budgeting wow. and sometimes we sit down and just do a family budget. But what we really love to do is send them to Dave Ramsey, which we have on property. And we give them the $100 Dave Ramsey scholarship and they go and they really learn how to budget how to and how to build wealth. You know, it sounds stupid to, to say, okay, we're dealing with the poor and we're teaching them to build wealth. Well, Anybody can build wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, they just need to learn to put the thousand dollars aside, do all the things that Dave Ramsey talks about. Anybody mm. can do that. So we put at least three or four families through every time we have a session. So two or three wow. sessions a year. And you know, that's that's expensive, but it's worth it. It's an investment into them. Wow. Everything we do is an investment into humanity. Okay. Yeah, because I would think, you know, some of us would have a hard time even relating to what you're saying, That, but mm -hmm. it, oftentimes it's because maybe things have gone consistently well over a period of time, mm -hmm. or you have that family support, or that family is like, well, as a family, we must succeed, we're pushing mm -hmm. you forward, that kind of mm -hmm. thing, or maybe even your network of friends that mm -hmm. kind of support you, but sometimes things just don't go the way you plan that they go, right? Oh, gosh, yes, and, well, addiction can take hold. We have a lot of addiction. Mm -hmm. like Hamilton County is ridden with addiction problems. So mm -hmm. when somebody's um, struggling with addiction and they haven't faced the truth yet, or they haven't hit rock bottom, and the family's tried to help, but they realize they're enabling rather than actually helping, you have to let the person fall in order to succeed. Mm -hmm. So where do they That's go hard. when they fall? Well, a stranger is somebody probably you're gonna listen to even more than your family sometimes mm -hmm. at that point. So Kelly, you and I have talked before about telling the truth to people and giving people mm -hmm. um, solid truths and what a gift that is because sometimes your best friend can't say something to them. They're, they're, they're afraid they're, it, they're gonna hurt your feelings or mm -hmm. something like that. And it's not that we don't care about their feelings, we do. We just know that the truth is the biggest gift that we can give somebody to help them get restarted. Mm -hmm. So maybe what our gift is that day is not just food, but is setting them up with somebody to take them to their first AA meeting or the first Al-Anon meeting or giving them a set of CDs detaching with love, which helps people continue to love the person that has the addiction, but detaching mm. from the difficulty. You know, wow. there's all sorts of things that you can do to help people. So take us through what you might say to someone who has an addiction issue and you're trying to tell them the truth. What, what do mm -hmm. you say? I usually ask them if they feel that their addiction is keeping them from living a normal life. Do you feel like your addiction is keeping you from living a normal life? Or do you feel, do you feel like it was the cause of you losing your job? Has it, has it made you lose employment? There's a, really a whole list and it's actually online on AA. You can ask yourself mm -hmm. um, the question, am I an addict is a little flyer that they give out. Those questions that we ask are actually off of that flyer. And so, when you ask them those questions and they give you the answers, if they aren't lying to themselves, which you can clearly tell if they are, if they aren't lying to themselves and, and you and telling you the truth, they're ready to seek help. Mm. But if they still haven't owned any of their difficulties and they're um, not telling you the truth, they're not telling themselves the truth either. They're not ready. How about owning it and I just don't want to change? I suspect you hear mm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have heard that. I have heard that. I, mm -hmm. But I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love my red glasses of wine. I love my, you know, I love my uh, crack or whatever. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, we went into the jail not too long ago in the Hamilton County Jail and met with women that were going to get out within a month's time to mm -hmm. try and give them resources of things that they could um, gain places that they could go to find housing, things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously we're just one resource in the county, so we were doing that. And when the women were talking, you could tell who said they don't ever want to go back to that again. They don't want to go live in the same area. They want to get away from those people because they, they know they have to break the pattern. And who plans to go right back into the same place, into mm -hmm. the same apartment with the same friends? 
So one's ready and one's not. One's not, yeah. But I think that's key, yeah. too, that you have to be, they have to be ready, right? Don't oh, you yeah. They have to be ready. You yeah. can't do anything. It's between them and God in the first place. Mm. But you can hope that you're that one person um, occasionally that that is there when somebody is ready and you can guide them in the right direction. But all for everybody else, you just be that drop in the pond of that one thing that was said that maybe they'll think about later. That, yeah. yeah, later that will lead them and whatever. And as far as the addiction uh, issue, what are you seeing there? And I, you know, I've been seeing on the news about the opiates, mm -hmm. but uh, is is Mm -hmm. Does is what you're seeing lining up with the, the news stories as well? Oh yeah, yeah. That's, I think. I mean, we've had problems with opioids mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Heroin is has gotten to be more affordable, and teenagers are getting a hold of it. And so, I mean, that that happened mm -hmm. quite a long time ago. The news probably lagged behind. I mean, does everybody anybody want to admit that that's in their community? Probably not, but it is. How are you finding that they're getting there? Is it the stories we're hearing now that I was on a medication, or mm -hmm. are people still getting into it because they want to get high? What it, do you see? It, that's a good question because every single case is so different. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I see there's some people that had colds. It made them feel good, and they're on cold medication, and they stay on cold medication. You know, so there is that where somebody pulled a muscle in their back and they got they got addicted to it. But I mean, usually mm -hmm. you'll have an addictive nature or genetic history of addiction in your family and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of us can have that in our medicine cabinet. It doesn't call our name at all. Isn't that weird how yeah. that happens? It's like, yeah. why, are, why do they like that? But know? don't yeah. put food in front of me. You right. Know? Well, I, that well, would be my problem. Sugar, you know, they're yeah. saying that it's right up there with Absolutely. Uh, with uh, cocaine. In fact, they, yes. I, recently someone told me about a study with, uh, with uh, it wasn't with, uh, I think it was with rats. And the rats migrated toward the sugar more so than the cocaine, though they had been given both. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, that says a lot. Yeah, yeah. And it, um, yeah, that's another show. We'll have to talk about that's another show. sugar, but sugar addiction. I'm glad you said something because one of the focuses that we have at our Choice Food Pantry, which is just one of the, one of the things, but I call it the focal point mm -hmm. because it's really what brings people in and helps us to get to the other issues, the other root issues of the difficulty that they're having. Um, so they come in. We actually strive to provide lots and lots of fresh vegetables and, oh, and nice. fresh okay. fruits. Okay. So we, we buy um, about $1,500 worth of fresh produce a week wow. to make okay. sure that it's super fresh. Plus, we rescue from a whole lot of places, Whole Foods and Earth Fair and oh, cool. all these okay. and all sorts of places. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back, and we're going to talk right. more about that fresh fruit and okay. how you help so many people in our community when we come back. We're back here on Inside Indy with Jane Slayton, who is the executive director of the Merciful Help Center here. And am I saying Noblesville? Is that where you're looking? No, we're in Carmel. Car in Wait, Carmel. Carmel is okay. our address, but we're literally on the border between Carmel and Westville. Okay. Okay. Uh, you provide so many services. I am just mm -hmm. blown away. And I know you do things for kids in school as well, right? Yes. Tools for school. Schools? Tools for school. Okay, tell yeah. us about that. Tools for school. Oh, it, hearts are changed at Tools for School. It's so beautiful. But families apply, and they can be in Hamilton County and zip codes 46240 and 260 um, in the northern part of Marion County. And they apply, and all they have to do is put their kids on this list and do a little family budget on the form. And we invite them to come. We give them an appointment. We don't believe in people standing in lines. Mm. We, we think that that's horrid when people, the news comes and shows this big long line of people mm. in need. To me, that's, that's so wrong. I think that that just means you didn't do your job because you could schedule appointments for those people and you could respect their time. Mm. And, mm. The, and the, the volunteers' time inside. Mm -hmm. They so, feel so hurried and rushed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do... Um, a new book bag per child and Beautiful. all the way from pre-K through college. So if mom or dad's in college, we do them as well. Wow. And so um, 
and then all the school supplies they need, mm -hmm. paper products, you know how some of them need paper products mm -hmm. and hand sanitizers and all that kind of stuff. That's and cool. then they go on a librarian does um, book in hand. They get to choose a new book. And our goal there is the literacy piece of getting a kid reading right before they go back to school again, getting refreshed. We offer a prayer room for spiritual, you know, for mm -hmm. refreshment. Um, we have a quiet room for kids with autism or whatever their special needs might be, mm -hmm. where everything's brought to them rather than them walking through. Then we fit them with a pair of shoes and we wash, you know, rinse the kids' feet just like Jesus did, oh. put a new pair of socks on, and, and then they get to choose. Every, everywhere they go, they get to choose between one or two things. Okay. So we want to increase their self-esteem. So every we want them to have choices just like all the rest of the kids do. Wow. And then they go and get some new socks and new underwear, because mm -hmm. who doesn't want a little bit of that? Right. And then they go to Hamilton County Kids Coats. They come into to, uh, to the Tools for School program oh. and offer lightweight jackets for the fall and spring, because they do okay. winter separate okay. from that. And then um, the Trinity Free Clinic gives them a fluoride treatment. And then we provide fresh fruits and vegetables on the oh, way nice. out. And that's what they get. It's really beautiful. Oh, my gosh, to see their happiness at the end. Wow. The parents' relief, the children's joy is, oh, I'm right. so lucky to have this job. I was wondering, like, the things that you see and that mm. it must be pretty emotional. I mean, it's very mm -hmm. gratifying, but and it gives you a tremendous tremendous amount of satisfaction, but I would think too it's, it, it can be very overwhelming sometimes. I think with my joy, joy <laughs> my joy comes from no, from that the glory goes to God mm -hmm. and that, that, that God is just being appreciated, thanked all day long. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can hear the people saying it. Mm. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Jesus. It's not necessarily the person in front of you. That's a good person too. Mm -hmm. But we really are the hands and feet of Christ, and that's the beauty. Can I ask you then, because you're dealing firsthand with people who have needs, and you're meeting people's needs, mm -hmm. and there's a lot in the news about the whole immigration issue. Mm -hmm. Do you mind me asking you how you perceive that whole debate? And because you're dealing with immigrants and people who have needs, do you, mm -hmm. and this whole wall issue and all what, mm -hmm. what what's your what are your feelings on that you know it's so interesting that you asked that I was watching the um I was watching the Olympics the other day and North Korean skaters came on and the man said it so eloquently I look at them as skaters and artists and the beauty of it all I'll leave that political part to somebody else mm -hmm. and that too is how Definitely I as a person feel, mm -hmm. um, but I think everybody there, these are people in front of us. These are people that need help. How, they, how you got in front of me is not really necessarily what I need to know. Mm -hmm. I need to help you to keep from crying. I need to help you with your depression. I need to get you to the right group for that. I need to look at you as a whole person right down into your soul mm -hmm. and see what you need to survive. We can tackle those issues next. I, I, I honestly, I don't know how I feel sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, what I know is that when somebody's in front of me, it's my job to love them, to love them to my best of my capabilities, mm -hmm. to not see gender, color, anything, mm -hmm. to but to love a person and find out what what they need in order to survive, to be happy maybe to become a tax-paying citizen in the future. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. that's important. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, how to be honest, What you know, what whatever they can do to mm -hmm. to become a, a citizen. Mm -hmm. um, if your visas run out and you're still in the country, what, what are you hiding from? Mm -hmm. Who do you need to tell the truth to? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, when DACA was, was was doing well and, and there wasn't all this controversy about what's going to happen with DACA, we would tell people to go and file for that because you want to be known. And what our, what our hopes were would that, was that you would be walking towards citizenship. So I have mm -hmm. a family right now, very good family, that the oldest boy um, is, is at IUPUI um, going to school and he's trying to get into a radiology program. We just did a novena for him. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been able to get in, but he keeps making the top cuts and going in. Mm -hmm. he's, he's on DACA. They don't know mm -hmm. what's going to happen to him mm -hmm. when this runs out. 
but the there's the the fam mom and dad here they're an excellent family most amazing mom comes and interprets for spanish all the time and helps all the families that don't have furniture that speak spanish to know what to do to gain the furniture from us and they have a little little girl that's just three and uh, another little girl that's in eighth grade mm. these and they're they're citizens mm -hmm. so what happens then he has to leave mm -hmm. if he has to leave and then they all stay right yeah i mean nobody wants to see a family split up it's it's our goal to keep families together right. or to heal families that have to learn how to be a single parent family or, right. or whatever but to keep them together too so right. yeah so i mean what how how am I supposed to feel? Right. Yeah. I no, love them. I, can, I want I can, them to stay together. Right. I can totally relate. And and I understand yeah. too that people feel that something has to be done. I think sure. it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Yeah. I yeah. think that's really what it's about. So, yeah. um, wow. Okay. I just wonder, you know, because I know you see these things um, firsthand. Um, you mentioned earlier about domestic violence. Mm. And so um, what are you seeing and how do you all help? And in fact, the president came out and said, uh, spoke against it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think in light of uh, there was somebody uh, who was a part of his administration mm -hmm. who's abused his wife or there were accusations mm -hmm. and he was coming out to reiterate the point that he was against uh, domestic violence, mm -hmm. which so with that being in the news and obviously the mm -hmm. the, the movement of um, Time's Up mm -hmm. movement and uh, what it's what funny you, how it brings it floats everybody to the surface that's str struggling to. Yeah. If you yeah. see somebody like the president of the United States say, it's it's wrong and it's mm. it, maybe it gives somebody a little more courage to step forward and maybe to walk into mm, the prevail good point, office. Good point. And we you we know? just have about a couple of minutes left, but I just I really want to hear what your response is on this and what you're seeing currently oh, through well, your agency. Well, what we're seeing is the same as we've always seen. We haven't seen any huge increase, but women come in, say they're struggling, that they're being beaten, or that they um, have experienced that, that they're being yelled at constantly. I don't think they always recognize it when it's not physical abuse and it's emotional abuse, but mm -hmm. that's domestic violence as well. And mm. and we send them to prevail, but we help them to get restarted. That's what we have okay. to do. Our, our, our goal is to help them get restarted. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps they get counseling and they want to stay in their situation. Maybe the person is counselable. Maybe they actually can change. Okay. But we find that domestic violence victims go back eight, ten times over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And we continue to love them when they come in and mm -hmm. encourage them to have a brighter future. Okay. How can people find out more about the Merciful Health Center and how can they support you? Because you have all this stuff and I'm thinking, where mm -hmm. does it come from? But uh, tell people how they can help. Well, they can donate to us. Mm -hmm. we, they can go to our website, www www.mercifulhelpcenter.org and they can check us out there which is about we're about to launch a new website so cool. the old one doesn't look as good okay. um, or you can you can write a check and send it to us at okay. 1045 west 146th street sweet okay. a okay do you accept any other like donations of say somebody has a yes. ton of lotions or things yes like that? we yeah we'll even bottle up those little hotel mm -hmm. um, pieces into bags and give them we give oh, yeah. everything out okay. so we really do focus on the things that food stamp don't cover like shampoo and toothpaste and okay. um, laundry soap they need it so bad diapers okay. toilet paper um, but any kind of food any kind of paper product we'll take anything okay. and then we take baby clothes zero to 24 months and all the baby accoutrement all okay. the furniture and all that kind okay. of stuff we take furniture Okay. Uh, large appliances, we take um, anything but TVs, but no, okay. nothing decorative. Everything okay. we take is basic need. Okay. And if it's not basic need, we give it to Goodwill. They give us vouchers. We give those back out to families to okay. go buy clothes. Okay. Well, we appreciate all that you do, and we appreciate you coming here and joining us on Inside Indy. Uh, Jane Slayton, Executive Director of the Merciful Help Center, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Kelly. It's a pleasure to be with you. On Inside Indy, and thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kelly Vaughn. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>